This week we actually finished building the bowsprit on the bench and fit it to the boat. We couldn't have done this without help from Evan, the naval architect, as well as all the viewers that have helped uh, with the design of this bowsprit. So we're really happy with the progress that we've made on it so far. And then later in the episode, we actually tested out some names we've been thinking of for the boat on some unsuspecting Patreons. My name is Matt. Follow along as I turn Duracell, the legendary ocean racing sailboat, into a comfortable cruising home. Last week, we built the basic structure of the bowsprit, finishing the week by gluing on the bottom of the sprit. This week, we're diving into the important details, including finishing the anchor roller channel and gluing on the gussets. I began by cutting out the top of the channel. Cool. Yeah. Projects like this are logistically difficult as I try to figure out the right order of operation. This bowsprit build has been especially tough and taking steps like this make me nervous. When a step like this is over, I'm very interested to see how it turned out. What kind of lamination are we doing this evening, honey? We're just putting two layers of uh, 17 ounce on the bottom um, of the bowsprit. And I'm not vacuum bagging it, shocker. Um, what? Why not? Because it's It's a tough vacuum. It, it would be a really tough one to do. And it's not necessary. So I'm just gonna do a really good job handling it. It's like you're tucking in the bowsprit for bed. <laughs> it's about 10 p.m. for anyone who's wondering why I'm thinking about bed. Yes. Perfect time to get some. Laminating them. 10 p.m. on a Thursday night. Mm -hmm.
the majority of the laminating is done on this thing. There's still plenty of little projects left to do on it. I have fit it to the boat. I've, and that means I take it up and realize, like, look at where I need to trim it here and there. Got it pretty well fit, and so I'm just going to show you how it looks. There you go. It uh, is not leveled yet. It needs to be, it'll probably be up a little bit, just a little bit higher. But otherwise, this is about how it's gonna look. The next thing is I'm gonna work on the anchor channel a bit more. There's some laminating and cutting that needs to happen in there. Once that is kind of squared away, then I can start building the gussets that go, that connect it to uh, lower onto the bow. But I think it looks pretty good so far. We're laminating the inside of the anchor roller channel inside the bowsprit. And so there's two walls that are making the channel and they're just glued into the inside of the bowsprit right now. And so what I'm doing is uh, laminating down and through and up and connecting it all together. The more I build this thing, the more I realize how beefy it is. It is an extremely powerful, strong piece. So this will be one of the last laminations on this part before we start gluing it onto the boat. Just meow? No, she did. Oh. See? I'm pretty sure I heard you meow. You can inspect the bowsprit later when it's finished. Patience. This hole got cut out of the bottom of the sprit. I forgot to turn on the camera to get this cut out, but this is where the anchor and chain will fall through. You'll remember when I talked to Steve the anchor guy, we were discussing the width of the channel and whether I could fit a shackle through this channel. I was able to make it a little bit wider, and the plan is to have a stainless liner or chafe guard built that will protect the fiberglass from the chain, but hopefully it will be just wide enough to fit a shackle. If not, we'll use the swivel.
I've done one on each side, and there's gonna be two total on each side, so four pieces total. The last part to be glued on will be the gussets. These will go below the sprit and are taking the place of a bobstay. Instead of the leading edge of the gusset being straight, I decided to cut a small curve into the leading edge. So I used a batten to find the curve. I'm hoping it's going to add some nice style to the gussets and sprit. So I have the bow spread fit to the boat and the next project is to work on the gussets that go underneath the bow spread. Uh, so tonight I've got them cut out and I'm going to glue them onto the bow spread. It's dark out so I'm, I've got lights set up out there. <laughs> All the laminating to build this part is done. The next thing to do is the little stuff. So the asymmetrical spinnaker will be tacked at the end of the bowsprit. For the attachment, what I'm going to do is put a tube through all the way through the bowsprit, and then we can put a line uh, that's dog boned on the underside. Just a piece of Dyneema will go through and dog bone. So yeah, I'm going to drill a hole through the whole thing, and so we can glue this tube in. I have to sand this really good and then I'll use thickened epoxy to glue this thing in. And then I'll just trim off the top and bottom so it's perfectly flush. Uh, but that's it. And now I can put a cap on the end of this as well. The bowsprit is done being built on the bench. Next week we'll attach it to the boat and see how it looks. Yanni and I took the weekend off to attend the Wooden Boat Festival in town and host some of our supporters at our home. We had a great time checking out boats, running sailing charters for the Maritime Center, and even bumping into a few fans of our channel.
and a bouncing boy, and they all look just like me, singing One for the morning glory, two for the early dew, three for the man who will stand his ground, and four for the love of you, me girls, four for the love of you. During the festival, we hosted a coffee and coffee cake in the cockpit for local Patreons. All right, everybody, thank you so much for coming. Thank you so much for being supporters of the project. Like, I, I know I've, I say this a million times, but we literally could not do this project without you guys. So thank you, everybody, too, that is not here. So, yeah, welcome to Port Townsend. Um, yeah. We'll show you the boat. Oh, yeah. Just remember, it is a wood space, so of that's what we had on our last boat, and we had we never had any problems. Yeah, that's great. Thank you. We've got some potential boat names in the hat. We're going to test them out on some folks, some unsuspecting patrons. This is a dirty hat. Five <laughs> favorites. Mate. Favorite guitar. <laughs> ready? There we go. Just take you ready? Big one. Is there just one mm -hmm. paper? All right, here it is. Spirit of the Woods. Oh, man. Oh, it sounds like here. Yep, exactly. It sounds like here. Yeah, this one is because the boat was called Spirit of Minnesota when it was first built, and then John renamed it to the Northwest Spirit. And so we're re it's being reborn in the woods, and so called Spirit of the Woods is an idea. So there's like good continuity. Yeah. <laughs> Doug Nad, Doug for short. Sure. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> More okay. Info. So this this is uh, I'm probably gonna pronounce this wrong, but Dugnad. Oh. Okay. Which means in old Norwegian, they would when a new couple would get married, the community would get together and build them a barn all at once and so it was a whole community effort to help this couple get going and so this project is absolutely a community effort and so it's um, a great you know and Yanni's Norwegian. So. Yeah. So it's a way to honor our patrons and our viewers and our, like everyone. everybody who's helped out. And it's easy to say three times in a row. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> but Doug, for short, is a pretty cool, I like it. Uh, shortened name, and we could say beware of Doug. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. He's got a radio voice. The last one. Oh. Sh <laughs> Jim. It's oh Jim. It's Jim. <laughs> no, Jim. Jim. Duracell. <laughs> yeah. That's the last idea. Yeah. The boat was actually never named Duracell. It was just the sponsor. Oh, right. So, you know, hmm. people know us as Duracell now, and so it's kind of uh, an obvious one. <laughs> oh. No. Oh, <laughs> she is not happy about this. <laughs> <laughs> I was napping. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Should we let her loose on the boat or? Uh, Probably keep her back in the. Yeah. Give another tour. Okay. We had a great time getting to know some of the local patrons. <laughs> We'd like to thank all of you again for being such a supportive crew. I'm going to help Matt with thanking our new supporters because um, recently a lot of people have chosen to support us, which we're so grateful for. And just a reminder that uh, there is no obligation when you become a patron, you can support us for the long term or the short term. We have plenty of patrons who, you know, support us for just a few months and we are so grateful for all the support, however it comes. So without further ado. First, thank you to Jeff and Jen who we met uh, here at the Patreon uh, boat tour day, uh, the coffee and cake in the cockpit. Uh, they are both racing sailors. Jen uh, teaches sailing. She manages and has a sailing school in Portland that she works at. Uh, and Jeff does some is a craftsman who rebuilds these really beautiful cars. Um, so thank you both very much. It was a pleasure to meet you, Jen and Jeff. Thank you to Brad who built this beautiful duck boat. Uh, thank you to. Bernard, who is from Seattle, his wife, uh, him, and he met his wife in Dublin Bay when they were teenagers. Uh, they used to sail this incredible House 17 boat, uh, I think, in Ireland, and 
just the coolest looking boat. You could see all those sails on that little boat. And, but now they have this Moody that they just sailed to Alaska this past summer. Thank you, Darren, who lives nearby and loves sailing his dragonfly with his family and crew of dogs. He has a, a dream to do a big Pacific loop, leaving Anacortes, going to Hawaii, Alaska, and back home, which is a loop that Matt and I are also very interested in doing one day. Yep. Also, thank you to Pete and Olivia, who are, they live in Portland. I got to meet them on a, we took them out on Levy and Rose during the uh, Wooden Boat Festival. I had a great time. Thank you to Hugh in the UK, who has a long history of sailing. He's taught dinghy racing, he's done round, or dinghy sailing, he's done round the can racing, he volunteered with the Youth Tall Ships Global Challenge, and he has a dream of doing some serious cruising one day. Thank you to Natasha and Matt, who I met at the Wooden Boat Festival this past weekend, and uh, it was very nice meeting them. They have this really cool chintella that they're caretakers of, and they cruise around uh, in the Bay Area. And finally, thank you so much to the Radio Wire in Central Florida. He's a jack of all trades. He get, he's into welding and ranching um, and boating, and currently he has a John boat. And thank you to Carl in Washington. See you next week. Thanks so much, everybody.